Page 23, chapter Historical, The Projection of the Astral Body by Sylvan Muldoon and Hereward Carrington. Please ignore my cats if you find to catch them in view um, or if they make any noise because they are surrounding me this evening. It is hardly necessary to remind the reader that the Egyptians believed implicitly in the car which might be said to correspond to our conception of the astral body. This car was not the soul of man. It must be understood that its vehicle, just as the astral body is thought to be the vehicle of the mind and the soul today, it was with this car which visited the mummified body from time to time and was usually depicted as a sort of bird-like double of the deceased, many of the... Older Egyptian paintings show this. The wanderings and trials of the dead man in the underworld are described at great length in the Egyptian Book of the Dead and in other early writings. Even more striking and important from our point of view, however, is the recently translated Tibetan Book of the Dead, edited by Dr W. Y. Evans Wenz and published by the Oxford University Press in 1927. This work, the Bardo Thodal, was probably first committed to writing in the 8th century AD and embodied, tech, embodied teachings much older. The manuscript from which the present translation is made is judged by experts to be between two hundred, sorry, a hundred and fifty and two hundred years old, as the reader may have sur surmised, it deals with the same general topic as the earlier Egyptians' work. But from our modern point of view, it's far more rational, and many of its teaching teachings correspond in a remarkable way with those of the occult and physical science. A brief summary of those portions of the book which deal with more or less directly with our theme with uh, will doubtless prove of interest. When a man is about to die, a lama is called in, whose duty it is to attend to the dying man and usher him properly into the next world. The arteries on the sides of the neck are pressed this done to keep the dying person conscious with the consciousness rightly directed. For the nature of the death consciousness determines the future state of the soul complex, existence being continuous transformation of one conscious state to another. The pressing of the arteries regulates the path to be taken by the outgoing vital current, prana. The proper path is that which passes through the foramen of Monroe. If the expiration is about to cease, turn the dying one over on the right side, which posture is called lying, posture of a lion. The throbbing of the arteries on the right and left sides of the throat is to be pressed. If the person dying be disposed to, to sleep, or if the sleeping state advances, that should be arrested and the arteries pressed gently but firmly. Thereby the vital force will not be able to return from the median nerve and will be sure to pass out through the Brahmanic aperture. Now the real setting face to face is to be applied. At this moment the first glimpsing of the bardo, of the clear light of reality, is experienced by all sentient beings. All the time the patient's dying, the Lama urges him to keep his mind tranquil and poised so that he may see and enter into the clear light of reality and may not be troubled with hallucinations or thought forms which have no objective existence save in his own mind. The Lama superintends the whole process of the withdrawal of the astral body from the physical at death. It is commonly held that the process of separation takes from three, from three and one half to four days 
unless assisted by a priest called uh, or extractor of the consciousness principle, Hofbu. And that, even if the priest be successful in the extracting, the deceased ordinarily does not wake up to the fact of being separated from the human body until the said period of time has elapsed. In the mind of the dying person has not been properly <laughs> sorry, consecrated upon the clear light, he is liable to see scores of devils and demons of all sorts, but it is emphasised over and over again in the book that these demons have no actual objective existence, they are merely hallucinations or thought forms having no actuality save in the mind of the seer. They are all purely symbolical. The mind is capable of manufacturing these and creating them, just as we do with every sight in our dreams. He must cleave his way through these into the clear light of the void. The sooner he can do this, the sooner the liberation is attained. The teachings concerning the astral body are very clear and concise when thou wert recovered from the swoon of death thy knower must have been risen up in its primordial sorry primordial condition and a radiant body resembling the former body must have sprung forth it is called the desire body the bardo body hath been spoken of as endowed with all these sense faculties unimpeded motion implieth that thy present body being only a desire body is not a body of gross matter thou art actually endowed with the power of miraculous motion ceaselessly and involuntarily wilt thou be wandering about to all those who are weeping thou shalt say here i am weep not but they do not but they not hearing thee thou wilt think i am dead and again at that time thou wilt be freely very miserable be not miserable in that way there will be a grey twilight like light both by night and by day and at all times even though thou seekest a body thou wilt gain nothing but trouble put aside the desire for a body and permit thy mind to abide in the state of resignation and act so as to abide therein. There are indications of the wandering about on this Siddhparbado of the mental body. At the time, happiness and misery will depend upon karma. <laughs>